On to Africa now. In Nigeria, the Boko Haram has slaughtered 110 farmers. The brutal killings have thrust into limelight the many conflicts and power tussles that continue to plague Africa to this day. In Ethiopia, the government has discovered mass graves in the Tigray region. In South Africa, President Cyril Ramaphosa is set to face a vote of confidence in the country's parliament. And in sub-Saharan Africa, the death toll due to malaria has outpaced that of COVID-19. Our next report takes you through all these developments to give you a sense of the multiple crises plaguing Africa. In the village of Zabarmari in northeast Nigeria, there's a sense of anguish and helplessness among the residents. 110 farmers in the village have been brutally slaughtered. They were tied up, tortured and then beheaded. So far, no group has claimed responsibility. But the barbaric killings are being called the handiwork of the Boko Haram. A jihadist terror outfit that has flourished in Nigeria for nearly two decades. Boko Haram has killed many of us. 32 people have been slaughtered. We need assistance. We need some weapons and armed men because we have youth who can volunteer to guard our farmers while working on the farm. Please do this for God's sake. As the bodies of the slain villagers were laid to rest, the farmers called upon the federal government to recruit more soldiers. They say they face a desperate choice to stay home and die of starvation or get killed by insurgents. Dozens of farmers are still missing. Reports say the death toll could rise further. Since emerging in 2002, the Boko Haram insurgency in Nigeria has developed into one of the world's most brutal conflicts. At least 36,000 people have been killed and more than 2 million displaced. Self-educated preacher Muhammad Yusuf founded the group in the northeastern Borno state. He called upon Muslims to reject the state and regard Western science and modern literature as sinful. The conflict he started remains concentrated in the northeast. Most of Nigeria's Muslims live in the north, while Christians live mostly in the south. The Nigerian government based in Abuja is often accused of doing little to stop the insurgency. But this time the country's president, Muhammadu Buhari, has vowed to bring the perpetrators to book. As Nigeria battles Islamic insurgency, nearly 5,000 kilometers away in Ethiopia, the situation is no better. The Tigray conflict in Ethiopia is showing no signs of ending. At least 70 graves have been discovered in the Humera town of the Tigray region. This discovery was made just a day after the Ethiopian government claimed that the region was back under its control. As the armed conflicts continue during the pandemic, the death toll due to malaria has outpaced COVID-19 in sub-Saharan Africa. According to the World Health Organization, there were an excess of 20,000 to 1 lakh malaria deaths in sub-Saharan Africa last year. Most of the victims included babies in the poorest parts of Africa. Meanwhile, political turmoil is plaguing the more developed regions of Africa. South African President Cyril Ramaphosa will be facing his first motion of confidence this Thursday. South Africa's opposition party, the African Transformation Movement, has listed 15 reasons why Ramaphosa should be removed from office. Mass murders, military conflicts, deadly diseases, and political unrest. This is a very difficult period for the continent of Africa. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. Thank you for watching Gravitas on Vion's YouTube channel. If you want to stay up to date with what's happening around the world, then subscribe to our channel and don't forget to like and share. Thank you very much for watching. Vion, World is One.